Okay, so in this example, we're going to compute the flux of this vector field here, x minus y comma x, across the unit circle. And so this is what the, um, the vector field looks like. So we're going to be going around this way as usual. Uh, we assume that it's uh, positively oriented if it doesn't say anything, so counterclockwise. Um, and then what do you think? Is the flux going to be a positive or negative quantity? Well, if you can make it out from the vector field, all these arrows appear to be pointing a little bit outward. So when we look at the component that's moving in the direction of the unit outward normal vector, I expect to get a positive contribution pretty much everywhere. Over here, it looks like I'm not going to get very much. These vectors are kind of small. But definitely over here, you expect to get something uh, that's going you know, in a direction kind of the same as, as the outward normal vector. So. I think probably we're going to get something positive. You should think of this, by the way, um, on an intuitive level as like, what if you put a screen, like, you know, just like a metal screen, um, into uh, a flowing fluid, and then you're just measuring like how much of the fluid is is passing through. So in some places, it looks like maybe the fluid is just kind of flowing sort of along the screen and not across it. But in other places, it looks like there's really fluid coming out through the screen. And so that's what flux is measuring. Okay. And in particular, if you had like a, a constant vector field, so like if, if it was, if all the arrows, whoops, wrong tool. If, if all the arrows were pointing the same direction going through here, then you would expect the net flux to be zero because you'd have a bunch of flux coming into the region here and then the same coming out of the region there, right? However, with this vector field, uh, it's definitely non-constant, and, and you can see that the arrows mostly appear to be going outward. So I expect something with a net positive amount. All right, so let's see. So first step, we're going to take our parameterization, and we do the usual thing because it's all we ever do, cosine t comma sine t, from 0 to 2 pi. And as usual, we've got our DC, whoops, it, which is going to be minus sine t cosine t dt. And so then the flux is by the integral that we uh, derived in the, the, the previous clip. This is going to be the closed integral around C of PDY minus QDX. So for us, that's going to be, um, let's see. So we've got our, uh, <coughs> this, this part here is P and this part here is Q. So we're going to have um, the integral over C of X minus Y dy minus X times dx. And so now we can put in our parameterization. So we're going to be going from 0 to 2 pi. So x minus y, that's going to be cosine t minus sine t. And then we have our dy, which is uh, cosine t dt. Maybe I should put that over here. This is um, minus sine t dt uh, cosine t dt. And so this part here is dx, and this part here is dy. Um, so we got that part, and then we have the minus x dx. OK, so just labeling this right here, this part here is x minus y. And this part here is dy, and then this part here is x, and this part here is dx. Okay. Um, so then this is, uh, let's tidy this up and collect terms. So we've got cosine squared t minus sine t cosine t plus cosine t sine t dt. And so then this is integral of, and these guys cancel. So we just have cosine squared t 
DT. And then we do have to do one of those like half angle power reduction type tricks. Um, and so that's gonna be uh, one plus cosine two T over two. And with that, we can work out that we get uh, T over two plus sine two T over four from zero to two pi. And the dust settles and we have pi. So there's our answer. And just as predicted, it is a positive number.